We're back with more of our interview with Kelly Fry. We talked a lot about making such a big career move after living her life so publicly for so long through breast cancer and the birth of her son Bennett and raising him. She spoke candidly about it all and the community support through it all. You know, I also want to talk to you about how, um, you know, we know how supportive Pittsburgh is and mm -hmm. Western Pennsylvania. You had everybody rallying around you as you went through breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've been that support for others now. How are you feeling today? How yeah. are you doing? Good, yeah. good. It hasn't come back. Yeah. And I say that, you know, um, matter of factly. Um, I had um, triple negative, you know, for most people that go through, you, you get the crash course in breast cancer right. 101, you know, when you start to go through it, but triple negative, um, invasive ductal carcinoma, um, still kind of like trills off your tongue, doesn't it, oh. <laughs> when you say that. Um, it does have a high recurrence rate, so, and I know that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not always good about, I should be back on the wagon of exercising and eating perfectly right and you know but I'm not you know so you just kind of everything in moderation as I start to get farther out from all that you know there's the, you go back and forth between just wanting to live um, enjoy life and not having to be so focused um, but I remember my surgeon his um his wife had gone gone through breast cancer and all the treatments and I, I'll never forget her saying you know there will be a day when you don't a whole day will go by and you don't you don't think about it and I think I've kind of I've reached that point now I still have reminders I still have my my tattoos you know yeah. where I had radi radiation I still have my scars right um so you know you look down sometimes and you go oh yeah that's where my that's where my port was for a year and a half but I'm thankful to be here for my husband and for my children because that was always what it was from the beginning so you and Jason taking on this new venture, how has it been going? Do you feel so invested and involved in your community and exhausted? <laughs> no, we're exhausted. We are, I mean, truth be told, we're exhausted. We're exhilarated. We're challenged. I joke that I'm getting more like folds in my brain again because every single day there is so much problem solving um, that goes into this. So we're loving it. Um, it's fabulous. But, um, and just, you know, it's Love Thy Neighbor Properties. Yeah. We started off LTN Properties, LLC. Um, and that truly came, so I'm sorry to hit the mic, but that truly came from, first and foremost, a conviction on ourselves to not get the, you know, you know we always have a tendency, and I mean we, you get angry when you see trash, when you see yeah. blight, when you see condemned houses. There's an anger, like why Why are people doing this? What, yeah. you know, why are we letting our neighborhood go? All these things. So and we said, first, check yourself, you know, love thy neighbor. We are all called right. to love one another, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might not like what somebody's doing, but you're called to love them. So then if you start to address, and we're not always perfect on this, but if you start to address people and situations from that perspective, then everything else will fall into place. Doesn't mean you can't have disagreements, you know, right. but again, um, it's just love thy neighbor. So that's what we started. And then when we looked at houses, all the condemned and blighted houses and vacant houses, just in 0 0.12 square miles of Elliott, which is technically where we're sitting right now, yeah. um, we said, okay, which houses can we start to acquire and what would be remotely financially feasible? How many uh, places have you rehabbed now? We're, we're technically, we're, we have two and then we have, we purchased a third, we're closing on a fourth next wow. week. Um, yeah. Kelly Fry, 15 years ago, would you have envisioned you doing this right now? Oh gosh, maybe. You know, I thought I'd, I thought I'd do news forever. Yeah. So that's the only quirk on that, as I, I thought I'd stay in the news business forever. Yeah. Um, and it was comfortable for my family. It was comfortable for my kids. Wasn't always comfortable for me. Right. And getting up at one o'clock, two o'clock, I realized how much I was driving my, myself into the ground. I loved doing my job for the people. Yeah. You know, truly. I mean, you know. Yeah. I love yeah. doing the job for the people, the people you meet out, and hopefully using that platform too yeah. for important and causes. And good work. And right. good works and things. Mm -hmm. And I think God afforded me, you know, God gave me Bennett for a reason. And I think he put me in the position that I was in for a reason mm -hmm. with having Bennett and then to be able to be an advocate, a voice. Um, not necessarily that I wanted th that, you know, but yeah. that was the role I was then afforded. Right. Um, and I think the same thing with breast cancer. That'll make me cry. 
you know, because looking back, boy, you know, I, I nobody wants breast nobody cancer. wants to be the voice of <laughs> breast cancer, you know, but you did become that. It was, yeah. and it was, and quite frankly, I still remember what what I, my flashback was. If I, you know, debating, am I going to lose my hair? You know, when I'm asking these questions, am I? What's going to happen through chemo? Will I lose my hair? Will I have chemo? You know, I I would have rather gone through things quietly if yeah. I could have and had nobody know. But as soon as I learned my hair was going to fall out and I started to learn the full extent, again, the blinders came off. I had no knowledge of breast cancer and how you, and everybody's different. There's a little bit of a course treatment different. But um, once I knew that I was going to go through that, it was kind of like, okay, buckle up, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be another ride, you know, and let's just be public about it because that's then the only way to try and turn it into something good. Yeah. You know? Are you happy now? I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always happy. I know. I, I was going to say you're always too. smiling. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's going to be lots of things in life. Right. Challenges, obstacles, um, pain, hardships, betrayal. Yeah. The longer you've lived, and if you've lived, you know. Yeah. I don't. I don't wish those things on anyone. But chances are, you're going to go through a lot. You know. Right. And I sit here today, thank you, Lord, um, on so many levels, feeling like a, ha a healthy, whole person, getting ready to turn 50, and I go, okay, what's next? <laughs> you know? I truly, like, what's coming up? Because I want to look back and just go, I did it, you know? I love that. I, I love that. I love that so it's much. so true. I really enjoyed our conversation. I hope that you did, too.